All right, so today you guys should be done with your value scales. Um, that's where we left off last time. Kind of check to make sure that you have at least five values that you can see and that you have a highlighted area on your sphere, okay? So now that you guys have practiced using our pencil packets, okay, the next thing you're gonna do is start to plot your values in the traced part of your portrait, okay? So you should have hopefully a nice line transfer from last time because you taped it down and traced it onto your final and then you have your glued portion. So the goal here is to try and match my values so that it's seamless, so that there's a seamless transition between the photo to the drawing. Um, and I say that keeping in mind that um, this is a drawing um, and we're doing the best that we can and effort is 50% of your score. So just put your best effort force, okay? So what I'm gonna do is make sure that I first have my values laid out how I want them. When you're not sure where to start, I often like to start with my darkest values first, okay? Because I know everything else is lighter than that. So for today, I'm going to have my 6B out and I'm going to go in and find my darkest values, okay? So looking at this photo, I would say my darkest values are going to be the hair and the eye there, maybe a little bit of a shadow on the nose, the crease of the mouth, and the shirt, okay? So I'm going to set this here so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to try and lightly block in some values that are dark, okay? Don't worry so much about having everything blended for now. We will get to that at our next phase. But like I have that little shadow in my ear there. So that's a nice little dark area I wanna shade in. Kind of highlighting the edge where my hairline goes into my face. Okay. Um, let's see, a pretty dark shadow right here under that lid. Easiest to see the darkest values first. Okay, we'll go back in with the blending tool after this phase and try to find those more subtle areas. Okay, and here under the nose is also another area. It's quite a bit darker. Okay, um, top of the lip and the crease of the lip are always going to usually be the darkest because um, they're kind of in shadow. Of course, it depends on your picture. Um, but in general, you're gonna have a shadow under the nose. You're gonna have the top lip in shadow. Usually the bottom lip sticks out slightly more for most people. So that's where you're gonna have a highlight, okay? So that we kind of can keep that in mind as you're shading if you're not exactly sure. Those are just some general things to think about, okay? So as I'm starting to block this in, hopefully you guys can see, it becomes a lot less intimidating when I have some of these shadows blocked in, okay? Because now I have some contrast, I have some things that my eyes can follow, okay? So that's why I start with the darker values first. And although not all of my neck is super dark, um, right underneath it is quite dark, right here under my chin line. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my darkest value, the 6B right there. And notice I'm not gonna color the whole area I'm just coloring where I see the darkest part of the neck shadow, okay? Kind of keep an eye on your hand here so that you don't smudge over your drawing. If you need to, I can get some tracing papers out so that you don't have to worry about that. Since I'm left-handed and I'm, my photo's on the left side, that worked out pretty well. So I kind of have a little bit of a barrier there, okay? So now I'm just blocking in like the basic dark value of my hair just basically toning the whole shape. Even if you have like maybe lighter hair and you can see some highlights in it, you don't have to worry about getting that right away. This is called toning. So what I'm doing when I'm toning something is I'm just going to shade in the basic shape, okay? Um, and that helps me to again identify all the other value shapes. And it helps me to kind of block things out so I don't get confused. Okay, so now I have the outline. I'm gonna go in and just color it more solid. Okay. Block that in. A little bit right here. I can look right here along my neck right there. It's quite dark right there. So I'll 
try and get that edge. So just plotting in your darkest values today, okay? And whether you use the 6B or whether you're like, I don't really know if I have anything that dark, you could maybe decide that the 5B is going to be your darkest value, okay? It just depends on yours, okay? Then I have down here. Now I'm gonna blend the shadow down so it doesn't look like I have a goatee, which it kind of does at the moment, all right? But I will use a different value pencil for that and I'm also gonna blend it. So for right now, I'm just gonna plot that dark shape and I'm gonna just let it be there. I have this dark edge of my tank top here, another dark edge here, really dark edge right here. Okay, just blocking in those dark values for today. 